Hey, welcome back to the 90s, dude. The 90s, of course, a marvellous time for technology, the development of art and animation programs, fledgling but ready to blossom. And one of these is Future Splash Animator. We're gonna look at the first version ever of Flash, and we're gonna compare it to what it has become in Adobe Animator today. Let's first discover what it was. Here it is, Future Splash Animator Trial. It just opens up straight away. It's super clear where, what goes where. It has layers. So we've got onion skin, 12 frames a second. Let's uh, let's amp this up to 15. Document size, and it's in inches. There's no pixels? I can't pick pixels? Oh, come on. Ah. Anyways, fine, there's our documentary. Let's dig into all the features this thing has. With the very first thing, someone should do in a new animation program, a bouncing ball. All right, let's start off with a basic shape. Circle, and hand draw a ball, no, hand draw a, no, hand draw a ball. Close enough. I'm gonna pick paint behind. So now, do the lines of the ball, and it appears behind the line I've drawn. There you go. Yeah. Lovely little ball. Create symbols. Yes! Ball. Let's make our first animated bouncing ball. Starting off up here, let's add a keyframe down here. Um, uh, do you know what? Maybe I'm just rusty. Maybe it's not even this program's fault. Maybe it's my fault. Let's see if new Flash, I mean animate, is all that more straightforward. Let's see if this is, really is as hard as it felt before. I'm going for a natural one. I know I could draw a circle, but I, I always like to hand draw where possible. So I don't mind that. I'll tweak the size. It was a little natural, but it's still hand drawn. Cool. All right, draw my lines inside. Boom, bucket. Boom, 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 fill. Is that what a basketball looks like? Check this out. I grab this, make it a symbol, ball. Up the saturation, change the hue. Okay. Now I know I can actually make layer guides to do the motion of the ball. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna work in the same way that I feel like I'm gonna be restricted to here. And I don't even know if tweens exist. So let's just do a frame by frame, straightforward animation. New frame, boom, new frame, boom. Let's pick up the speed. We're falling now, let's stretch the ball a bit. It needs to be in the direction of the fall. Now that we've got some frames, let's throw in our onion skin so we can see everything that's going on. We hit the ground, we squash the ball on impact. In fact, I wanna add a frame just prior to impact so we have a, an immediate comparison between the ball shapes, boom, because we're bouncing. Then we'll grab my stretchy ball and after impact, bouncing up in the other direction. In fact, we'll go quite extreme. Because the next frame, we can start to get our normal shape back. In fact, I'll get my normal shape by copying the first frame, paste it over here, just like that. There we go, we're slowing the arc and we're starting to build up again. It's picking up. The key to being a great animator is to subvert expectations. So I am going to <laughs> extra squash and then we're just gonna squash one more frame and then we're gonna go super stretch up and fling off the screen. We can put our loop on, because let's face it, it's very satisfying. Boom. How much of that can I do here, using the same process. Got my first ball frame. Let's turn on onion skin. Uh, insert, no, wait, make keyframe. All right, there we go, cool. Do I have to, man I think I have to manually. <laughs> okay, fine, sure. Every time I have to manually select make keyframe. I need to speed this up. So let's make this 30 frames a second. And I want to <laughs> stretch my ball. Uh, what's this? Show handles. <laughs> Okay, it's a little less grabby. Can I rotate? Yes, cool. It's got some, it's got some, something. Stretch our balls, give them a good stretch. All right, we, and we squash. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awkward handling. That's okay, I'm getting what I want, which is the most important thing, a motion. That was actually pretty good. Boom. Next, we've got a new keyframe. I'm gonna start getting tricky because I copied previous frames in the current version of Flash. Let's do that with this version of Flash. So we're going through the motion. Let's delete that frame, paste. Yeah, that worked. Cool. Boom. Change your sizing. Okay. This is where I would just like go copy keyframe, copy keyframe, copy, and just with these minor motions each new frame, which I did before. I have to select the next frame, control M, but that doesn't do it because my playhead's in a different place on the timeline. And then I do that and then it does it. And oh my God, this is horrible. Boom though. Look at that. It is working. That's something. It's not a lot, but it's something. All right, so that first bounce, then we have the next one, which uh, subverts people's expectations by going new frame, control M, move across, slow it down. You can do control M, move across, grab it. Oh my God, the 
pro the shortcuts are just so convoluted. Like you gotta click and then you gotta control M, but then you have to move across so that you know you're on the front. Click across, then you gotta control M, move the time player, and then you gotta grab the thing, then you gotta click, control M, then you gotta, it's very, very frustrating. But I'm done. Boom. Haha! <laughs> you see how it's subverted your expectations again? Now I have to say, it's working. It's not amazing, but it works. And if the first thing you animate to test a program or to practice animation is a bouncing ball, surely then the next thing is a walk cycle. So let's do that. Let's add a few layers here. On the lowest layer, let's let's try and make something a little more substantial now. I'm not going to use this. This is just to follow. Let's go something nice and cartoony so we can add a bit of character to the walk cycle. Let's give it a little friendly tuft of hair and we'll keep it nice and simple. In fact, uh, we're going to we're going to mix frame by frame animation and tweens here. So we're going to have the feet and the hands, they're going to be symbols, meaning things that we can apply tweens to. I'm going to add limbs, stuff with a bit of a better walking pose. Okay, something like that. It's, it's nothing super amazing, but it's good enough. Now in this case, good enough is fine, but sometimes good enough isn't good enough. Sometimes you need the best. And when it comes to your privacy, you deserve the best. Which is why I'm excited this video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. Now, I know you've all heard great things about the internet and the real visionaries amongst us will know that it's up and coming. It's actually gonna be a big deal. That's why it's really important if you wanna maintain your privacy and anonymity when you're surfing the web to use a VPN, a virtual private network that keeps you and your information and your data safe. Private Internet Access is a leading VPN provider with over 30 million downloads all around the world. When you use Private Internet Access, all your internet traffic goes through a secure VPN tunnel. There are loads of use cases for using private internet access as VPN, such as unlocking loads of international streaming content from Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and more. Private internet access is available on all platforms. The latest versions of Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and many others. And your single subscription can be used to protect up to 10 devices at the same time. On top of that, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't love the product, you lose nothing. They have over 20,000 servers in 70 countries, 24 seven customer support. They accept loads of payment options, reviews for this service are spectacular, and they've received PC Mag's Editor's Choice Award for the last five years. It's built on open source technology so you can see how it's all built and know what you're getting. And of course you can use it to block ads, trackers, and malware. They're offering an amazing deal of a three year subscription with two extra months for free and at the low cost of only $2.08 a month. So that's 83% off. To claim it, just click on your Internet Explorer browser and type HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www that's worldwideweb.privateinternetaccess.com forward slash jazza. Huge thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's animate. Okay, I think I'm set up and ready to go. Now let's just go through the same process that we went through before. I have to grab them, control M. So I've got duplicates of those first frames. Then I'm gonna grab these middle ones, control M. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna swap the positions. Let's just slightly move the, the head and the body just to give it some variance. I have to manually select the rotation tool every time. So I grab it, select the rotation tool. Oh no, I'm gonna hate this process so very, very much. All right, so we've swapped our positions. Now let's see if we can add a tween. We grab all this, right click and interpolation. That's the, inter okay, interpolation is tween. We copy these end frames, paste them at the start. Oh no, but it doesn't place it. No, what? This is so dumb. Work. Select all the frames. Paste. Frames. No. No, 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 no. Paste. Paste frame. No. What are you? No. Uh. Undo our interpolation. Let's paste our frames before the interpolation. Doesn't, didn't work. Oh my God. Let's paste our frames, but then we'll grab these next ones that says push, push forward. We'll delete frame. How do I, what are you doing? No. Gotta grab all of them, push it all out. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna right click, interpolation, motion interpolation. Okay. Oh my God, that was. That was a mission. But it's working. Okay, cool. Okay. 
All right, we've got a bit of a walk cycle. Well, at least the start of it. I mean, look at that. It's starting. It's working. It looks so much worse, but I'm so much happier because it's a huge relief. All right, the only one thing remains for both of these is to frame by frame the limbs. And with a nice thick brush, I'm just gonna draw the arm like this. I'm just frame by frame drawing the arm in the different poses that I'm hoping is gonna look good in the animation. Let me just do the same thing with a limb layer under the rear hand. And then the legs are super easy. I'll just do it on two layers underneath. And this one, just because it's got the, the black tummy there, I could just draw these with a black line. Just like that, I've got a finished walk cycle. Really easy to do those noodly limbs in between. We have a hybrid of both tween animation, a little bit of frame by frame. Again, that slightly hand-drawn element adds a little bit of bounce, bit of life, good fun, right? Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. <sighs> well, let's see how this goes. We're gonna need a new layer. This one's gonna be called um, front. And with my layer set up, it's time for some frame by frame animation. With a mouse. So as I recall, you grab your brush, pick our skin tone. You have to activate the layer to draw on. You can't just click on it. You have to click there and click current. Okay, now it works. Now I grab the ink bottle, select black, click on that. Okay, cool. I can make this a two point. There you go. Cool. You know what? I'm going to select all of these. Right click, make blank keyframe. Yes. Ha, that'll make it quicker. <laughs> Next frame. Now just go through every frame and just click. It's basically just paints an outline around a drawn section. It worked! Ha ha! This has given me a boost of confidence to take this beautiful thing over the finish line. Okay, you ready? And, I mean, we did it. It's actually not bad. I mean, to be honest, it reminds me of that meme. Hey mom, can we have an animation program? We have an animation program at home. At home. <laughs> but with that said, we, we actually followed all the same steps. There are only very few features that aren't there as far as being able to do the absolute basics. But it's very interesting to see uh, how far <laughs> the animation programs have come. And like I said, we have really just scratched the surface of Animator compared to Future Splash. But with that said, full, just outright confessional, I. I don't like Adobe Animate. And I've used Flash for my whole career. I made the tail teller using Flash and right at the transition where it became Adobe Animate. And with every update, there's been a new feature and a thousand things that are broken. And then a lot of the features that are introduced are just not good <laughs> or just not well crafted. So I really do think that uh, Adobe has missed the mark when it has come to turning Flash into a full-fledged animation software. And while it's been interesting to see the beginning of this whole digital animation revolution, I guess you could say, by going back to Future Splash, it saddens me to say with Flash officially dying this year, I don't believe Animate has done what it's needed to do to fully transition into being a great animation program. As far as being fully capable, I say all this with a giant asterisk, of course. Whatever program you prefer is great for what you can achieve and Adobe Animate is a fairly easy to learn and fairly substantial animation program. The reason I say all this is because I think there are better priced and far better built animation specific programs and companies out there, uh, especially compared to what they used to be. But let me know in the comments what animation programs I need to check out. I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Toon Boom Harmony. So leave me your thoughts and recommendations in the comments. I'm interested in your thoughts both on where we've come from and where we're going, where the animation standard is currently at in programs, because I'm eager to try some new things and see where things are currently at and share my thoughts with those of you who are interested in getting into animation digitally. Otherwise, that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip to the 90s. Make sure to subscribe for more fun with art, animation, creativity, programs, old and new. Click like if you enjoyed this video and our little dive back into the 
prehistoric era of digital art. And make sure to check out the other videos over there, which you're bound to enjoy if you enjoyed this one. Otherwise, that's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.